really fun day. We're going to be adding textures, okay? Now I know that sounds a little bit boring because, well, it's just textures, right? On flat surfaces in an interior for a horror game. However, I've kind of figured out, but I need your help. I've kind of figured out how to make textures look really premium, but also toony at the same time. So I need your help when we jump inside of Unity to figure out how to make these textures look premium, but also something you might see in like Wind Waker, okay? Now, before we do that, guys, I did wanna let you know that today is, again, a special day. We're sponsored by Full Time Game Dev, which is my online program. It's massive. This thing's gonna take you two months to finish. Um, it may be even longer, depending on how fast you go, but it's 50% off right now. There's only two coupon codes available for today. It might say five below. There's only two, actually. Um, <laughs> there's two available today. Um, so if you want to get those, uh, be sure to check it out. These usually sell out during these live streams. And in fact, I just want to welcome new students. Guys, this is so awesome. It means the world to me that John, Igor, Joseph, Romario, and Luca not only supported father's development, which that's my game I'm working on today, but you guys also supported yourselves. And you're, you're I can genuinely say that without sounding cocky. It is a really great course. Um, because I have over 3,000 students and they love the program. So be sure to check this out, guys. You're gonna learn a ton of stuff and you're also gonna get these free programs as well. These are not usually free, but they're free for this promotion. 2D Art Pro, Stream My Game, which is how to get streamers to stream your game, and then Easy 3D. This one is usually free. This one is usually free, but these are my premium programs. This is a premium program, guys, because it's massive. It's two months long, so be sure to check it out. And you're also gonna learn how to secure funding from Kickstarter, secure funding from publishers, how I do it, how I uh, do C Sharp, how to do Unity, how to do 2D and 3D, and how to, um, what is this one? Oh, that's workbooks. <laughs> There's plenty of workbooks that you could download as well. So be sure to check it out. There is a ton of stuff here, and hey, you get a free T-shirt, which is pretty sweet. I will see you guys on the other side. Let's go. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this is like one of the funnest things to do for me, and I've, I've figured this out slowly. Once you... Once you figure out what all the slots are in a material, the albedo and the normal map and the height map and the occlusion or the AO, um, the metallic map, once you figure it out, it's actually really, really fun because it's like a combination of 2D and 3D, okay? So you can see here we have some blank wallpaper, okay? These are, are hold on one second, got a phone call here. Um, these are blank because we're gonna be filling in these walls with textures. Now, we've got a very simple scene here. We're just throwing stuff into this scene because this is just all of our props that we're working on for this hotel level, okay? So I'm gonna hit play here. I just wanna show you guys the materials we've got, but also like why we're focusing so much on the floor and the wall and the ceiling textures. Currently, if I hit play here, you'll notice that this scene, I mean, it, we're just throwing crap around, right? It's just random. But this scene here is very plain, very basic. But by the end of this stream, this room is gonna look premium. It's gonna look, it's gonna look like an indie game, but it's going to look, it's going to look great. It's gonna almost even look like Wind Waker mixed with like Resident Evil, okay? So right off the bat, let me just pause it and show you how important texture is, okay? So this is a texture that I made today um, this is something I really enjoy. I like this one a lot. This is our tile floor, okay? So it looks kind of weird without lighting, but this is what it looks like in game, okay? So this is how important texturing is, right? I think it, the normal map is a little too high, but overall, this sort of tiling just makes the game look that much better, right? So much more detailing is added here. Same is true with carpet. Let me show you the carpet texture that I made today. 
And also, we'll take a look at these models that Felipe's been working on. Um, so if we go to our carpet here, we have a carpet art deco. Look at this. So now we're getting like the shining vibes, right? Really cool. So it adds just a huge difference to your scene, just being really intentional with your texturing. Now we have no textures on this wall here. So let's go ahead and start making a wallpaper texture. Now, sadly, there's not a lot of like PBR textures that are available on like textures.com that are like art deco. Uh, I haven't been able to find much. So what we're going to do, this is, it's going to seem bad what I'm doing, but let me just, just hold on. We're going to Google image art deco wallpaper. Okay. Sorry. Let's make sure you never know what pops up on Google images. So I try, I'm trying to be careful for you guys. Um, I really like this one. Um, so we're going to use it. Okay. I'm going to open up Photoshop and you guys will see. Okay. So let's open up Photoshop. There we go. So Photoshop's open. Let's open up unity really quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate one of the, do I have a wallpaper? We do. Okay. So we have a lot of different wallpapers here. I don't like any of them. So those are all crap. You can see here that they look kind of like, they're just boring. So we're going to delete all of them here. I don't even like that one um, because we're making a more art deco type hotel. Okay. Um, so we kind of moved from like purely a castle theme to more of an art deco hotel theme. Okay. So that's kind of where we're at right now. So we have this wallpaper here, the materials all set. So we don't need to create a new material. I'm just going to open up this wallpaper. Oh, look at all this crap here. We don't need any of this. Yeah, we don't need any of that. Okay, so let's delete that. I'm trying to stay cleaner with my project file here. You should use normal maps. We are, and I'll show you how we're going to do that today. Welcome Alex and Alberto and HF Guet and Gomez and Jaleel. How many of you are new, by the way? New to the stream, let me know with a, with a hand raised emoji and I will give you a shout out. Okay, so I'm gonna paste this Google image here, okay? We're just using it as inspiration. We're not gonna steal the entire thing, okay? Um, here we go, okay? So what I like to do is just save this and then put it, just immediately put it in the game just to see, okay, how, how dense is this texture? Is it too complicated? Is, is it not complicated enough? Pastine H4D3, uh, Nerdy Guy Rick, welcome, welcome. All of you are new. That's awesome. That's great. Sfixie, how are you? And for those of you who are just joining us, just remember that Full-Time Game Dev is sponsoring today's video. And that is my online course. It's a massive course, and it's gonna teach you how to start a game studio. But more importantly, guys, how to, how to go full-time, right? How do you get enough money to go full-time to make games? The, the, the course is massive, and it teaches you exactly how I'm doing what I'm doing right now. Believe it or not, I'm not just full-time because I do YouTube. That's not, that's not how it worked. I had to actually really just start from scratch and with Kickstarter and publishers and making games. I was able to formulate some strategies to actually go full time and pay, pay the bills for my family. I teach how to do that in the course, but also how to teach, well, how to make games and artwork and flipping assets and sound and reaching out to the press. Just a lot of things that we teach in that course. It's freaking massive. And by the way, if you're a student, feel free to sell low in the chat. Let me know about, let me know what you think about the course. I'd love to know. If you're a student, let's drag in this wallpaper here. Okay. That didn't work. I'm going to turn off the effects here so I can just see this wallpaper. So we're going to open up pro builder. All right. Welcome Elmer and Paragon earth and Pablo. Welcome Herm dev. Awesome. So good to see you guys. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Okay. We're going to open up pro builder here. And we're going to select our faces here that are all the same material. So we're going to select by material. And now we can drag in that art deco wallpaper. Okay. There it is. Okay. Now for some reason it didn't save. So let's save this. 
And now right off the bat, you can see why we're caring so much about wallpaper. Let's uh, bring our character controller over here. I'm gonna press Control Shift F. That's gonna bring him to the viewport. And then there he is. So let's hit play here and we can just walk around and observe. Looks pretty sweet, honestly. Now we're not gonna steal this. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little dark, right? Um, so what we're going to do, I, I think the sizing is a little, hmm. Let's compare the sizing to a more complicated floor pattern, okay? So if we drag in, let's say, this red carpet. Come on. There it is. And now we can take a look and see sort of the, the complexity of all of our textures here. We want it to feel toony, okay? We want it to feel toony. I like it, honestly. Okay, let's let's bring up the brightness so we're just able to see it more because I can't really tell what it is. Um, so I'm gonna delete all this here and we're just gonna bring up the brightness. We're not gonna use this, okay? We're not gonna use this texture, but this is purely just to get a good idea of scale. I always start with some kind of Google image just to get an idea of how big I want things, and then I come up with my own texture on top of it, okay? So let's just, we're gonna do colorize, and we're gonna do like, I know I, I, know I wanna do, yeah, I know I wanna do like a greenish gray, okay? And I'm, these are tricks I've learned from my wife. She really loves interior design. And um, a greenish bluish gray is some co it's a color that she really likes that we try to put in our house as well. I think we've put it up here actually, right up there. Um, but uh, yeah, okay, so eh, meh. But I just wanna be able to see it better. It's so dark in here. You guys wanna add some lighting? This is ridiculous. Hey, let's see if we can clear the baked lighting. Okay, okay, there, it's brighter now. Okay. Yeah, I think, um, I think it'll look good. Let's let's throw in a, uh, if we go to our environment light here, we're gonna do gradient, uh, you know, a color, and then we're just gonna increase this brightness here. Can we increase this? Let's see here. Yeah, we can, okay, that's ridiculous. I just wanna be able to see what's going on here first. Okay. All right. So, I hate that brick now because it's not really, it looks like a castle, not Art Deco. Okay, so I can see it pretty clearly now. I'm gonna remove this though entirely. No environment light, oops, shadow colors, we want that. Um, yeah, so we don't want any sort of, any light source really. Um, that was just for me to be able to see. I'm gonna put a point light in here so that we can get a better idea of what this scene looks like, because right now it's a little dark. Just a big old point light in here. Now, obviously, guys, you want to be baking your lights, especially if you're using URP. Um, increase the intensity. I wonder why the floors aren't letting light in. What's going on? Oh, that's why. So it looks like we have some just, man, that sucks. So if you have a lot of real-time lights, it just won't render the lighting. It's a really dumb, dumb thing about URP. Um, so what I'm gonna do is remove some lights because you can only have eight. You can have only have eight lights on a surface, um, which is really lame. So let's see here, but we can bake it. You know, we can bake the light. Let's just, yeah, let's just bake it and then I'll do a, a quick Q and A. So I'm gonna do, let's see here. If we could take this up here like that, we'll be able to see better what this light looks like. Yeah. Let's see here, where is it? I think it's right here, yep. Okay. So, and we'll bake it really quick just so we can get a better idea of how this scene looks here. Okay, that's great. So I'm gonna copy that and then go back and then just paste it down here, okay? Paste and then bring it down and then we can bake, okay? While we're baking, I'll actually just start the texture, okay? 
So let's go ahead and bake this. This is gonna be a baked light. Baking takes a while. Um, and that's okay. Let's generate some lighting and then jump into Photoshop, okay? So what specifically about this texture do I like? Well, I think first off, I think it's a little too, um, too complicated, so I'm gonna go a little bit bigger. I like this. These triangles are really cool with lines. That's really cool. So we could do something like that. We can take our pen tool and just create some diamond shapes. Now we can make a diamond shape that way, right? Or we can be very precise. The thing about Art Deco is it's ridiculously precise. It's very geometric. So what you're gonna do is take a square, rotate it, and then squash it. See? just a little bit, right? Okay. Now, the thing about Art Deco is it's super precise and there's a lot of different patterns that are formed. So if we squash this down like that, there we go. And we're just gonna use this blue color here. Right off the bat, we've already got a really pretty ge geometric shape Okay, so watch this. We could take this here and just move it down like that. And I'm just gonna cut here and here. And now we have that cool like, I don't know, <laughs> Art Deco diamond shape, right? All right, bring this down here. And why don't we keep it there? That's cool, I like that. Um, let's get some more inspiration again. Let's keep going. And these are gonna be gold, right? So we're gonna use a metallic map to make them really, really shiny, okay? Art Deco also has like sunshine shapes. Um, so what we can do with that is we can, let's see here, what is going on? There goes Photoshop. Son of a B, hold on, let's see here. Oh, it looked so good and it didn't save, but that's okay. We'll open up Photoshop and do it really quick again. Get out of here. I don't want to see you move, move, go. Um, all we got to do is just do that same mentality, blue background, diamond shape, right? Looks like our, um, baking is about halfway done. So that's good. But let's open up Photoshop here. Hi there, Nature Studios. How are you? Control S every five seconds, that's right. Okay, so it looks like maybe, yay, okay, so it kinda saved, that's good. Um, hey, remember the, the star shine shape, right? So what we wanna do here is, I think what we can do, this is just a theory, but I think what we can do is take this, um, not rounded, so we'll do zero rounded edges. Nice square here. Uh, same width as the other one. Let's let's check on the width, guys. You want to see? Looks like we've got a line width of twenty-seven point five one. Um, so for this one, same thing. And then what we're gonna do is I think we can do a forty-five degree. Um, I think we should squat. Do it like this, actually. And see, look, everything is geometric, right, with Art Deco. You don't just do it by hand. You use a lot of different math. So like, we're gonna do something like this, right? Do one more. Now, just bear with me, you'll see in just a sec. I'm gonna move that up here. Now watch this, this is great. If I convert that to a smart object, and then let's say we cut these edges here. We've got that star shine shape now, see? Pretty cool. And then I could take that and I could flip it vertically so that they're perfectly lined up. Now, how do we know if they're perfectly lined up? We'll take that edge there, that edge there, and these are just our little guides. And then I just knock it down. And so it's gonna be perfectly looping top and bottom, okay? We don't necessarily have to have it loop, but if we weren't looping, we would need some indicator here of why these are just stopping. So I'm not sure what that would mean. Um, let's see some more inspiration here. 
Yeah, I like that shape actually. I wonder if we could do this. That instead. Yeah, having that sort of triangular shape is really cool. Yeah, that's okay. So what we're gonna do is take these. It's not gonna be that big of a deal. Knock it down. And how about just the top one has this intersection, okay? I'm still learning how to do Art Deco. Still learning. These guys, I believe we can knock them down um, to there. And then this one to there. There we go. There we go. All right, let's just save it out and take a look, okay? Um, we've got to save. This is a recovered file. So let's go to our textures here. We're going to go to our wallpaper. Wallpaper Art Deco. Could not save because of something stupid. There it is. Okay, file save. I don't know if I like that star shine. I feel like the star shine is a little too wide. But it's good to it's good to save things as PSDs, guys, because that looks terrible. It, uh, because you want to be able to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right? Uh, between Photoshop and um, Unity. Okay, so that looks kind of cool, right? Um, those are sweet. Smaller ones, right? It, it looks like they're the same angle too, which is good news. So what we can do is take that there, bring it. Um, Actually, we could bring it like this, cut right there, flip vertically. Actually, let's make it a smart object. Now we can flip it vertically. And hey, that looks pretty cool. Convert that to a smart object. The theory is, put it there. And, oh darn it, here, let's do this. I've got it, hold on. I've got this figured out. Um, what was it, 27.95 or something? Okay, go white. And then angle it, like that. We're gonna squash it, same sort of shape here. Why didn't I just duplicate that one? What am I doing? Um, almost there, guys. Now, why does it matter that I'm, why, why am I spending so much time on one texture? Is this feature creep? Is this Thomas being a perfectionist? No, because we're gonna be reusing this texture throughout the whole game, right? Um, we're gonna be using it to, we'll, we'll use red colors, we'll use green, we'll use yellow. So we're gonna create a lot of different cool shapes or cool uh, materials with this one texture, okay? Uh, much better, okay, we're getting there. Good, they're all the same angle, I like that. And when they're gold, they're gonna look very much Art Deco. That's that's the goal. Um, let's take this and I believe, let's get some more inspiration here. Ah, lines. That'd be cool, like a line going straight up. So let's do that. So see how we're just taking inspiration, right? Taking inspiration from other wallpapers on Google, but we're really creating our own sort of shape here, right? Nice and lined up, save it. Good, all right, see, already. And right there, I wonder if we could do like a filled in diamond. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. So that's actually, it's right here. Ah, yes, okay. So we'll do a, we'll take this, we're gonna squash it down, and all we gotta do is put it right here, okay? And we just fill that in with white. Now we're gonna use gold. We're gonna we're gonna go into the metallic map, make it really shiny. I think you guys are gonna be really impressed. After this material is done, you're gonna be very impressed with how it looks with just a very simple shape like this. So let's take a look and see if we got a diamond shape. Yep, there it is. Pretty cool, huh? I like it a lot actually. I don't think I want to do anything else. Um, the baking is done, thank goodness. So now we don't have flickering lights all over. Let's hit play and take a look. All right. So it's a little bright in here. So I'm probably gonna rebake. Um, yeah, so let's 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 take this point light that we just have here, this white one. We're gonna make it yellow, like an orangish yellow. And we're gonna drop the intensity down by to like 40. Okay. And let's 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 rebake. 
So we're gonna rebake that. What we're gonna do with this is we're going to first um, combine all of this stuff here, okay? So if I combine all of this, I can do a color overlay. A, we could do a, a gold color overlay, but we also have the tile. Yeah, yeah, so we need to get the tile. The tile has a nice yellow tone that I really like. Um, so let's go to our tile. Ooh, we have a marble floor. We can definitely use that. I like that one a lot, actually. That's great. So not, it's not toony enough, but that's okay. Uh, but let's go to our tile. Where are you, tile? Tile Art Deco, good, there it is. We could take this same um, sort of modeled texture here. Watch this, I'm gonna rasterize this, and then I'm gonna fill this in like that, turn the modeling back on, whatever that word is. Now I can copy this and just paste it right over top this. So now it kind of looks like a um, sort of a film glossy um, golden printing. And we'll even emboss it, okay? So let's take this and just scale it up. Now we'll need to make sure we blend, right? But for now, I think that should be fine. Uh, what I also want to do is let's think, okay, is it going to be embossed or is it going to be inside or outside the, the blue, right? Uh, thank you, Daring Bo Boot. Coming along nicely, Thomas. I watched your stream the other day and your pro builder tips were good. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And guys, just remember, just remember, today's video is sponsored by what? Full-time game dev, which is my online course, premium online program, I'm gonna take you two, minute, two months to finish, you're gonna learn everything I've learned in the last decade. It's 50% off right now and you're gonna get three bonus courses totally free. There's probably one or two codes left and yeah. Okay, um, let's go ahead and do a drop shadow here. Let's think here. It's embossed, so we're gonna do a drop shadow on one side. Watch this, you're gonna love this. That's one way, right? We're gonna do overlay, drop it down. We're gonna, we're gonna blur it. And then on the other side, we're actually going to do another drop shadow, but this one's gonna be white. And it's gonna, suddenly it's gonna pop out, look embossed. See? So now it's, we'll make it a little bit bigger here. Yeah. So now it looks like it's imprinted into the wall, right? The way you make it look even more so is you actually go to the inner shadow effect and we're just gonna do dark. Look at this, you're gonna love this, look. There it is. And one more on the other side. But this is, this is what I mean by going stylized, right? We're trying to make it look stylized. The goal, the reason behind why we're doing stylized in the first place is because, I'm curious if that needs to be white. No, no, definitely not. Um, the reason we're doing stylized, guys, for this game is because we're trying to, it's, it's a marketing decision, sure. It definitely is a marketing decision because it helps you stand out among all the other more realistic games. Realistic shooters, well, this one's the one that looks like Wind Waker, right? That's one reason. But the second reason is I just love stylized games. I just love it. Hey, let's add a little bit of modeling. Whatever the word is, I don't know what it is. It's like just like subtle shifts in darkness just to make it look a little warped. Let's save that. Go to Unity here and take a look. Awesome. Okay, it's coming along, it's coming along. It's a little too red, but it looks like uh, the baking is complete. No, it's still going, it's still going. So we can't really tell, um, but what I do know is I need a very subtle texture, okay? So we're gonna go to textures.com for the wallpaper, okay? So if I go to textures.com and we're gonna type in wallpaper texture, see what we get. There it is, ripped wallpaper, I love that. Yeah. Now you'll see here, guys, there's there's like, no, I, I mean, we'll, we'll double check, but there's like no art deco on textures.com. So if any of you wanna sell your textures, I would maybe consider, hey, you know, can we do a wallpaper texture? 
uh, for for textures.com because there seems to be a need to be met. Okay, so this is cool. I, I, I think that I want to use this normal map here. And then, no, it's because it's, it's ripping. It's not really going to serve us very well. This is cool, though. I really like this one. It will make it look a little bit more toony, okay? So we have the albedo. Um, that's fine. So let's let's snag that. We have the the height map. Um, I, I don't think I'm going to even use that. We have the normal map. Let's use that. We have the the roughness. Yeah, definitely want to use that. And then also the AO. So we're going to download all those. I know I'm doing this a little little bit weird. Downloading all these is just the way I like to do it. Okay. So let's just start with the albedo. All right. So we're going to drag that in there, and it should allow us to scale it up to the 100% size. And what I'm going to do is do an overlay here. We could do a multiply, but put it below the gold. Well, let's see here. Does overlay work for us? It could. We just don't want it to be too aggressive because... Again, it needs to look toony. Let's go to multiply here. Yeah. Brightness increase, contrast. There we go. Drop the saturation down to black and white. Yeah. That bottom is, is, is not going to work for me, right? We don't want it to do that. So I'm going to try and... Uh, I'm going to take... Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to convert this to a smart object. I'm going to fade out the bottom or... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to fade out the bottom and then flip it vertically so that the bottom is perfectly going to loop, okay? The left and right should loop just fine. Um, so let's save that out. Hopefully Unity's done baking, almost, almost done baking. Let's see here. So we've got a nice sort of texture here. I don't like the red, right? The red is, is, is definitely weird. Um, so what I'm going to do is take this yellow and it should be, this should be all we need. Let's take a look and see if that looks good in Unity. Much better. Okay, so we got this really nice golden trim here. So pretty. Now what's going to make it explode on screen, what's going to make it look so good is when we add the metallic map and only add a heavy shine to the gold. Okay, so I'm looking forward to doing that. It looks like our uh, baking is taking forever, which is totally unsurprising. But I'm pretty sure we can just keep moving forward. Um, let's go ahead and I, I think we should do the metallic map really quick. Okay, so all we got to do for the metallic map is we save it as metallic. Okay, so far so good. I'm actually going to take all of this and I'm just going to do white. This is just going to be black, right? What does that mean? It means that the anything that's white is going to be super shiny, and then anything that's black is going to not have any shine at all. That's the theory, right? So let's save that out, jump inside of Unity, take a look. All right, so let's go to our inspector here. Um, if we go to our wallpaper art deco, and let's grab that metallic map, stick it there. And that, I think, is working. Is it working? What do we think, guys? Is it working? I think so. Let's hit play. Looks like it is. We might need to increase the... Uh... Yeah, yeah, I think it's working. Yeah. Yeah, so the wall is way less shiny. I wish it was a little bit shinier. That's great. So I, it, it, did I do, that's where I need your help, guys. This is where I need your help. So the title is uh, a legitimate question. Am I doing the metallic map right? That's the question. Am I doing the metallic map right? Okay, yeah, good. So if I go over here especially, now that is way too intense, right? 
Um, why does it keep changing? What's going on? I think that'll do, Donkey. It looks like not. The black still reflects. Yeah. Anybody know why why that's happening? Let's this is what I needed help with. We're going to do a Google search. Let's type in metallic map unity and see what's going on. Um I feel like it doesn't it need to be in the Yeah, it looks like the Unity shader is confused because you need to make a roughness map or a smoothness map. But I don't want to make a roughness map or a smoothness map. How? Is it in the is is it in the red channel? Is that where it's supposed to be? The red channel? Ugh, I hate this. You need to select texture type metallic. It's it is. In the alpha channel it's in the alpha channel so we need an alpha channel save and then take a look <laughs> oh yes thank you so much always blood thank you so so much that is what i'm talking about okay so the same is true with the floor okay look at this this is why it's so important um to use metallic maps look how cool that is Oh, you can't see, sorry. Look how cool this is. Like that is awesome. Especially when you go to places where it's like lit like this. Now it's a little intense, it's a little intense. So let's, uh, I can't do it real time. So let's drop it down. Good, pretty shiny. I wonder if we should uh, expand it a little bit or like blur it. Let's try, let's just do a little bit of a blur. Try and save that and see what happens. Yeah, that looks a lot better. And you can even make it more intense. If I, um, so for example, like if I select this and then I uh, do an expansion, by like five, no, 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 um, the other way. Select, modify, contract by three. We could fill it in just a little bit more so that there's just a little bit more shiny happening. And then you can do a little bit of a blur. And I think that'll make it look smoother. Yeah. That's sweet. That way we can do a super hyper shine. Look at that, guys. See, this is why I love having you guys with me because if you hadn't told me that, I wouldn't have known. But I'm glad we're making an Art Deco game, or at least this level, because it's super cool. Like, it's really easy to make things look special um, or unique. I can't drop you down in real time. That's crazy. I think we need something like that. Now technically we could do like an emissive, but this is great, honestly. Very cool. All right, so hey, you know, it needs a normal map, right? So let's just go ahead and do a normal map really quick. The normal map, I'm not too worried about all the different textures here. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Let's go to our floor really quick. Let's throw in a floor. I wanna fix the floor, because we had an issue with the floor. Um, let's see here, tile art deco. Select the floor here and then drag in tile art deco. Come on. Um, carpet. So the tile art deco is a little too intense. Um, wow, it looks terrible. Okay, so let's fix that really quick, okay guys? Looks like we have just some bad looking textures depending on the lighting. Yeah, I think the, the baking Yeah, the baked light just makes everything look terrible. Which makes me think, you know, we need to be sure that we like we like the lighting. So let's go to our light here, that point light we had. I think we need to bake one more time because I think it's just a little too much. This baked light is just too much. Like if I look at this, this is what's frustrating with Unity. It looks totally different when you clear the baked light. Right? Um, Ambient color, zero. What about the shadows? Okay. 
Okay, let's hit play really quick. Okay, this is what it should look like, but for some reason, yeah, for some reason we're just having a lot of lighting issues. So, uh, the floor looks cool, but I know that we wanna light a little bit more. So just a little bit more of lighting in this scene, okay? So let's go to our point light really quick. Where are you, buddy? There he is. And I'm going to select him. I think he's just too intense. We'll do 15. We're gonna bake one more time. I think the, ugh, there's just too many lights. Let's do this, let's do this. Guys, let's clean up the scene, okay? Because it looks like we're just having a lot of conflicting real-time lights, and, and you just don't want that. Um, so I'm gonna delete that one. We're gonna delete all of these guys here, all these enemies, so that we can really get a good idea of what our scene should look like, okay? And get rid of this guy. Get rid of all this. Yeah, one of the big problems with Unity is that if you light an object, let's say like this whole substance object or this uh, whole Pro Builder object here, it just, it's so frustrating. Um, if you do eight more than eight lights, it just loses consciousness, it just gets really confused. So it's just frustrating. Um, so what you have to do from what I'm learning, I mean, unless you guys have better advice here, what I'm learning is to just um, just constantly be baking. I, I don't know. It's kind of frustrating. Um, okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's just so dark. That's cool. Okay. This room here, there's a huge light in here. Um, so let's just go ahead and delete all of our point lights really quick. We've got a bunch of these just random point lights. That way we can go into this room and see what's actually baked. Okay, so these are our baked lights, right? But it makes it just begs the question, should you actually have uh, some kind of it's hard to know some kind of light source in the environment lighting. But the problem is environment lighting doesn't bake. Oh, it's frustrating. So the environment lighting doesn't bake. All right. If you want a lot of real-time lighting, use HDRP. You know, I'm starting to wonder if that's true. I think you might be right. Um, but I think all of these are baked. I mean, all we gotta do is, this is cool. So if you go to rendering light explorer, you can see all of the ones that are real time. So we have a gun light, which is on our gun. And then we have this one here, which is the spider, right? Looks like the spider himself is gonna cause some problems. So we're not gonna have a point light on the spider anymore, uh, which is just really frustrating. I mean, what does he look like? Let's hit play here really quick. Sorry, we're kind of getting derailed here, guys, because I'm just seeing a lot of issues with lighting. Where's our spider boy? I think he's in here. He's fine. He's not the greatest thing ever, but I just can't put real-time lights on anything. It's just super annoying. Um, and how, like, that's what's frustrating. How am I supposed to light a scene, even with baked lights, if Unity can't even render it? like in the editor. Make the lights mixed, not real time. I don't think that fixes your problem. Does it? Somebody tell me if the, that's correct. Make them mixed instead of real time. Do you really need real time lighting? Well, I need to at least see how the scene looks like when I'm lighting it, right? That's what's frustrating is they'll flicker out in play, in, in the editor, they'll flicker in and out so you can't see them. Um, let's create a point light here. 
a point light prefab. So I have point light flickering. I'm going to take this and I'm going to call it point light ambient room. It's just an ambient point light. Okay, so if I just take it up like this and just expand it, the, the hope is, is that when we bake this scene, it looks great. Okay. All right, so that looks good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go to Inspector here, and I'm going to hit Apply. And we don't want it to flicker, and we want it to be baked. Hit Apply. And then the theory is, these are all static. These are not static, so we need to make them static, right? Um, this is baked, good. And then this counter needs to be static, right? This counter needs to be static. This is just a pain in the A, but this is what happens when you're working with 3D. This needs to be static, right? Lots of static stuff in a 3D game, guys. A lot of static things. Um, these little friends here, they need to be static, right? The, the light itself needs to be baked. It is good. Okay. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Poly shape is static. Good. Really quick, I'm going to fix this now. That now that we can really see it, I'm going to fix it. So it looks like our texture here, which is going to be our tile, our deco, it's a little... That is ridiculous. I think we need to do like an overlay. There we go. Good, so he's a little bit darker now. But as you can see here, our metallic map is now incorrect, right? So if I take this, copy it, and then put it in the, like you said, the alpha channel, now the shine should only occur on the, let's take a look, this is the theory. This, the shine should only occur was that? Yeah, on the metallic map, on the alpha channel. Look at this. It's not called alpha. It's maybe do that. Hmm. Oh, crap. Let's take a look here. So it looks like our wallpaper, this metallic map is working just fine. Alpha 1, okay. So why is this still shiny? Let's figure this out, guys. Why is the floor still shiny? Um, I don't know. So let's go to our metallic map here. I don't know. Huh. I shouldn't see a shine here. I should not see a shine here. Does anybody know why that's happening? We have our height map, that's cool. We have our normal map, which is a little much, honestly. Can it be something to do with the lighting instead of the metallic map? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, yeah, it should be working. That's, that's isn't that weird? Um, let's delete this. Does it just need to be a white? Like, I don't know. Okay, now it's working? That's so bizarre. Um, alpha is transparency, remove matte, hit apply. Okay, I think I might have it. I don't know. Just invert your metallic map and plug it in roughness. Well, there's no roughness. Uh, we're gonna figure this out, guys. Tile Art Deco, there's the metallic map. Nope, I'll be the alpha. Oh, it's so close, guys. We're gonna figure this out. Um, this needs to be like 0.05. I think, did that do it? Did that do it, guys? Let's hit play, take a look. I think it did it. I could be wrong. 
I don't know what happened or why, but The roughness is the alpha channel. Yeah, that's what I, wait, 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 wait. The roughness is the alpha channel. Then what's the, what, what channels the metallic map? You know, I don't know. I'll talk to Felipe. Um, so that looks good. I think the height map is a little insane. So we're gonna drop that down. But I also think the albedo itself is a little too intense. So I'm gonna drop down all of the, the opacity here for the inner shadows and all that because it's kinda a little intense. Um, good, we should be able to save that out and it still didn't work. Hmm. Okay, let's uh, swap it out with carpet now. I, it's fine, it's not my favorite, it's fine. Um, let's go ahead and swap it out with just the standard carpet uh, Art Deco Red. There we go, and take a look and see how everything looks. Good. So I kind of wish that that wallpaper wasn't so dark. Um, so if you were to think about it, um, like in real life, if I had a wallpaper like this, that's pretty dark. So I wonder if we should just increase the, uh, the lightness. So I'm gonna go to hue saturation, just increase it, but we're gonna do a colorize. Okay, like that, drop down the saturation. Try and save that out and let's take a look. Pretty cool. I think it's great. Now we're relying heavily. This is the thing when you when you're when you're making a game, especially 3D games, you need to decide how much are we going to rely on lighting for things to look good, right? And I think in this case we're going to rely heavily. We're going to rely heavily on it because um, this this looks about how much how lit I want a scene to look. Um, it looks great, honestly. I really like it. Um, but the problem is, is the moment where we bake it you guys will notice it's just gonna get screwed up. That's the trouble with Unity, is the moment where you bake stuff, it just, although that, I think that was baked, wasn't it? Let's take a look. Hey, I think that was baked. Oh, I love those shadows. Looks like the shadows are doing well. Um, ooh, shadows look great. Good, those guys aren't casting shadows, so we need to fix that, um, which is fine. These don't seem to be lighting much, so we'll, we'll increase the light value for those. So let's do those two things really quick, guys. Unfortunately, these are all prefab changes, right? So if we change a prefab once, it should fix the problem, right? Um, so these don't cast shadows for some reason. It looks like it says cast shadows, so I don't know why they're not casting shadows. Not sure, let's bring it over here. I think it's just because it's not baked. Yeah, it's because it's not baked. So over there, it can't cast a shadow. That's fine. Um, so those will, once they're baked, those will look good. These guys, the theory is that this needs to be brighter. Yes, it does. Okay, so we will do that. Increase the intensity of the brightness here. I'm gonna hit apply and just see what happens much better okay now that glass needs to be illuminated okay so I believe we have a material issue that we need to fix so let's illuminate that glass really quick and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this right here so this material glass on okay I can just hopefully drag that right here there we go looks way better now um, hit apply all and these should all be baked. They are. Yep, all of our lighting's baked. Thank goodness for our um, material inspector or our light inspector. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit play really quick. This is without baked lighting, right? So that's why you see things flickering in and out. It's good to have like no real time lights, just bake lights currently, just so we can see what it's supposed to look like baked, 
okay so far that looks pretty sweet doesn't it guys i really really like it i just want to show you really quick what we're going to be using the flooring for okay so if i select this and i hold shift and then scale uh, but we want to make sure that our um, snapping is turned on if i scale to say something like this we can grab our points really quick here and just make sure they're snapping into place. I could do right here, and then this one I could do down here, and then this one here. We're gonna swap out the texture of the floor so that it's more of a, uh, we could do tile, or we could do, we could do like black and white tile, or we could do, um, hang on one sec here, let's figure this out. Stop talking, Thomas, and think. Um, that's got screwed up. So these really, should be positioned here, and then this one and this one up here, this one here, okay? So now we've got a perfect block distance of two, right? Yeah, so we're two away, one here and then one here, and then one here over here. All right, so now we're two away, so now we can select this face here, and we can swap it out with that tile, right? Um, so this hopefully will give us an idea of kind of how how things are going to work. Um, and by the way, a lot of you might be asking, when are we going to make a game? Like, when are we going to make an actual level? When all of the, the, the generic art pieces are completed and we have enough materials to actually build a level, right? That's the goal. And by the way, if you're just joining us, just remember that full-time game dev, which is my massive program, um, there is probably one code left. Um, I'll give you a shout out tomorrow. You get a free t-shirt. You also get a massive program that's going to take you two months to complete or longer, there's a private Discord server. It is a premium program because you're gonna learn everything I know about starting your own game studio and doing it full time. It's a great program, great reviews. I can honestly say that, um, so be sure to check it out. Link is in the description, 50% off, one code left. All right, what am I doing? Ah, yes, let's go to our tile. And if I just drag in our, t son of a beat, there we go. Okay, so there's our tile, right? If we hit play here, we can get an idea of how this is gonna be utilized. So that's super intense, right? That's just ridiculously intense. It's cool, but I think it should only be used sparse, sparsely. Um, so I think um, what we wanna do here, let's come up with a tile that's not like this, like a very simplistic black and white tile. I think that's probably better. Hey Thomas, I just wanted to say your course works and now I might be working with a game publisher soon. I'm just waiting for more info. That's freaking awesome. Way to go, Mini Tom. Can we give a round of applause to Mini Tom? Thank you so much. I paid Mini Tom to do that review on camera. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. I'm super happy for you. Um, so yeah, like it looks like these kind of textures here are just a little too intense. So I'm curious if what we could do is like it's only for like pathways, right? Or like centerpieces. So if I take these materials, I'm gonna actually merge these uh, vertices together, that's ridiculous. And then just move that there and then move this, whoa, 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 whoa. this here. Or even, even an outer edge or something. I'm just curious what we'd be using this texture for. Sadly, sometimes you know, you, you make a really pretty texture and it just, it looks too gaudy or something. Um, this would be the tile, right? The the new tile. So let's let's see here. I think we have stone tile. Yeah, we have stone tile. Um, this isn't Art Deco at all, right? So we have Art Deco, not Art Deco. So this would be maybe like black and white, okay? So let's go ahead and create a black and white tile. Before we do that though, I did wanna say, um, if I take these, let's see here. What we should do, I really wanna keep, yeah, 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 okay. So I wanna create a carpet rim, okay? So that tile's cool and all, I'm just not sure exactly how it's gonna work. I'm gonna merge all these vertices together though. Uh, just weld them together, collapse them. Actually, let's go back in time. I know I'm being annoying, guys. Um, if we take this and just shift, just do a little shift here and then hold control, we can do increments of 0.25, shift, 
Thomas, what are you doing, buddy? Shift, click. There we go. Okay. We can take each vertice. You know, there's no inset for subs or uh, Pro Builder, which is just a pain. But if we hold Control and then Snap, we can get a nice. We're gonna have a nice frame. That's framing this carpet. Okay. So just snap them all in here. Almost done. Almost done. And then we're gonna create a yellow frame. We can merge these together. Weld or collapse them together. Pop and then pop and then pop and then pop. So we're gonna have a nice clean frame. And, and the way that I like to think about this is when I'm, I, I know that I'm not really making progress on the game itself because we're not even making a level right now. It's super duper important though to realize that, let's delete you. It's super important to realize that you need things to look great right at the beginning before you start building stuff. Um, it, when, when you're actually working on the visuals, right? And that's what we're doing. We're really focused on the visuals right now. Okay, um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a rim, all right? So it's a 0.25 rim, and that means um, it's gonna be 0.25 of four, right? So we're gonna go to our document here. We're gonna cut this into fourths. So we're gonna do a gold rim here. Uh, what? Cut it into fourths, so 40%, or what am I saying? Uh, 25%, <laughs> Thomas. And then after this, it's gonna be 0.25, all right? Um, the truth is though, we don't need to do it this way. All we gotta do is take this, do that, flip it horizontally and vertically. I'm learning what, as I go, guys. That's why I'm being so such a spaz today. Um, and then merge those together. And then one more, flip it vertically or horizontally. And then there we go. So now it's gonna loop perfectly. Okay, so this is gonna be like our gold trim texture, right? Um, so let's create a new folder. And we're just gonna call it golden trim. Uh, we can just call it golden or gold. Um, gold flat. Flat gold. <laughs> and we're gonna use this as a trim piece. Um, flat gold albedo, okay? So we're just gonna drag this in to this sort of face ring here, right? And so it's gonna create a nice golden trim around There we go. I know it's not perfect, but that's fine. I'm actually gonna just drag the rocks material in there for now because we need to create that golden material. So we're gonna call it material flat gold. All right, remove all this crap here. If you can get a, a very abstract flat surface looking really, really pretty and really cool, then it's gonna make things so much easier, easier for you in the long run. That's the theory, right? That's the theory. There it is. And now we can drag this flat gold material uh, here. There it is. And just make sure when you select this material, uh, so we'll go to select by material, go to the UV editor and set it to four. Okay, that way it's just a very simplistic color here. And we can even um, just tweak it a little bit, make it shiny, very shiny. Let's hit play. Good, okay, so it's like super duper shiny. Um, so let's, uh, <laughs> we don't want it super duper shiny. There we go. So it's like a nice velvet golden trim. Maybe bring it up a little bit. There we go. There we go, that looks great. All right, so we have a nice golden trim here. Now the question is you say, okay, well it doesn't look very good, Thomas. It doesn't look 3D. Well, you know, after we've finalized a level, what we can do is sort of extrude it down by like 0.25, like that. 
and you could even scale it a little bit like this, see? That way, it's a little much, but let's see here. We should be going by increments of 0.25. But yeah, you can do stuff like that. I wonder why. Hmm. Yeah, stuff like that. We can select this and then just add that gold trim. Just very subtle, subtle details like this. Um, flat gold, drag it in. There we go. Hit play. Yeah. Eh, eh. It's not the greatest thing ever. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, what you can do though is, you know, if we have weird unwrapping issues, you can select all the materials. So select by materials and then go to UV editor and then just go to four. Or we can even do one, honestly. No, 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 no. Eight. There we go. Much better. Hey, that looks great. So we have this cool golden floor, right? Very interesting room. Very cool. All right. Okay, but you know, I, I also wanna make tile here, okay? So what we're gonna do is open up our very simple tile. Um, so I'm gonna just duplicate, ah, marble floor, that's what it's called. I like this. So we're gonna keep this very simple. Um, I'm gonna just create a square. And let's see here, we can fill this in, right? We can fill this in with a, um, black color and white colors, right? But we can have a, a just a very subtle, I want it to be a very, very subtle marble. But what I wanna do is the dark color here, this, I wanna sort of bring that over here, okay? So that we're matching our black colors. And what we're doing, by the way, guys, is we are, why would that not be perfect? That's crazy, it's just not perfect. We downloaded this texture and look, it's like not even lined up properly. So I'm missing something here. So we're not even gonna be able to use that texturing. Okay. And then we'll do white. And this is a PSD, right guys? Well, it's gonna be. <laughs> so let's save our PSD. So that's Marble Floor Albedo. Save that. We're just going to delete the other one. It's just not doing it for me. Um, yeah, we'll delete you. I don't like it. Uh, let's go to our Marble Floor Texture, uh, or our material here. So if we go to our Universal Materials, we have a big folder called Universal Materials. And uh, I just lost it. The reason we have it is so that we can really see all of our textures. There they are, universe materials. Do we have a marble floor? We do, okay. We're gonna swap this out with the new texture. And we're gonna drag this in. Much better. See, this kind of stuff really works with this room. So if you're gonna have a super detailed wall, ornate wall like this, I think a marble floor like that looks a lot better, right? Oh, thank you. So uh, somebody said it reminds you of Dishonored. I love that. Thank you so much. Is that Ken, what's his name, Ken Levine? And wait, what am I saying? Is it Ken Levine? Um, yeah. Um, okay, so that looks great. What we wanna do is we're gonna use a little bit more of a yellowed color, okay? And then we're gonna take these, and we're not gonna have it so intense, okay? So we're gonna drop it down, save it like this. So we really just want it to be matching. Look at this, it looks so much better. Ken Levine is Bioshock. I thought he also did Dishonored. Didn't he do Dishonored? Um, okay, now let's add a little bit of normal mapping, okay? Um, just very subtle normal mapping. Although I will say we could probably get away with a little bit of texturing here. So if we go to my browser and we go to our, let's type in marble. We should get a nice marble texture. That's great. 
yeah. But we're not we're we're okay using custom textures here. Black marble slab. I would say white. That's good. I feel like all we really need the roughness is good though, but yeah. Yeah, let's download that. And then also the albedo. Yeah, okay. So let's open up the albedo first. And we're just going to make sure it fits perfectly in here. I don't I don't mind uh, scaling it up. I don't mind at all. Okay, good. And we're going to set it to overlay. Isn't that cool? It looks toony, doesn't it? I really like that. Hey, looks great. And then increase this. I wonder if we need to make this black now. Let's take a look. Yeah, I think, I think we do. Doesn't it look great, guys? I just love it. Okay, and then we also have that roughness, right? Um, so the roughness we can actually, I'm gonna actually keep it as a tiff because I have a theory we don't wanna ruin all of those. Uh, we don't wanna ruin all of the, speak like a normal person. What are you saying, Thomas? Ruin all of the channels. <laughs> oh man marble floor good 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 drag in our metallic it looks like it's kind of working right I couldn't tell you I'm still figuring out this roughness thing let's open it up in Photoshop and see what's going on I'm still figuring it out. If we go to the channels here, look, it's not even working with the channels. Copy it. Does it need to be an alpha channel? I mean, good grief. I can't, I, I still can't figure it out. I did read that, and Felipe was helping this with me today. He was saying how, um, Unity's roughness is just weird. And so I just need to not be so impatient. Let's see, this one is a PSD, so this one's the TIFF. We don't need the TIFF anymore. If somebody wants to help me, this is what I was asking for in the title. If somebody wants to help me figure this roughness thing out, oh, there it goes. It works. Check it out. So I feel like we need to invert it. That looks cool, actually. I like that a lot. It really does make a big difference. So if we invert it, so it looks like the alpha channel is officially it. Um, if it's white, it's going to be shiny. Look, check it out. It works. Awesome. Okay, so let's hit play here and take a look. Hey, guys, that looks really good. I feel like we want to do a roughness for this, too. That's great. We could probably do one here, too. Make it look a little bit splotchy, but yeah, it looks really cool. It really does, I like it a lot. Um, to make it look a little bit more Art Deco, I think what I wanna do is go to the Albedo, and I want to add a, I believe, just very subtle gold trim lining. This could be a really bad idea, but really subtle gold trim lining the bricks or the, the, the tiles. So let's just do this. But isn't this fun, guys? I don't know. I really enjoy um, doing texture work. It's actually something I didn't know I enjoyed, but I started doing it yesterday, and I thought, man, this is really fun. Save that. Okay. Good. If we have a normal map on there, it might look cool. I don't know. I, I kind of like it, but I kind of hate it. Um, let's add a, yeah, yeah, an inner shadow to it to make it look like it's inset into the tile, right? So one there and then one here. I feel like it needs to be both. 
and then a drop shadow on the outside of white. And then a drop shadow of dark on the No, that's wrong. It needs <laughs> it needs to be the inner shadow. The inner shadow needs to be pretty dark. So for some reason, ah, drop shadow of very bright on the other side. Ugh, I'm just gonna ignore it. Don't get too complicated, Thomas. Let's do the normal map, okay? Um, the normal map is just going to be this with a white background and this will be pure black and I'm going to go file save as it's going to be normal and we're just going to use Photoshop's generator it's not the best but it's fine um, this can be normal I wonder if we can get a little bit of a normal map out of that no I don't want to do it let's just <laughs> let's convert this to a smart object then go to Filters, normal map. Interstellar says, Father looks epic, best wishes. All right. So, so tell me, McCour, your material uses a metallic smoothness map where the smoothness is saved in the alpha channel and the metal in the other channels. So you're saying the metal is in like the red or the green? Which one does it need to be in? Which channel? So the metallic is in something, right? All right, so there's our floor. I have doubts about this, but we're gonna drag it in. Look how pretty that floor is. Thomas, you're winning. Look at that. So let's go to our marble floor and put in our new normal map. This one's crap. Put in our new normal map, which is this one drag that in and fix and then we're going to do point two and we're going to take a look it doesn't translate to me i have a theory that it should actually be this let me show you uh select modify What's the theory? Ah, yes, I think I got it. So watch this. If I take this and then I do a stroke and then I make it green. Yeah. And then do center. No, no, no. Outside is fine. I have a theory that if I rasterize this and then just get the green, um, you could sort of decide. May maybe I'm wrong here. I haven't been working, I haven't done a lot of normal mapping with Photoshop, but I'm gonna try this just really quick. I feel like that that's what we want. We want it to dip down in the center of between each one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that looks bad, but just give me a sec here. Um, I feel like we could blur it. Okay, I think I've got it. Blur, gosh, and blur. And then do a normal map. Okay. Invert. Click OK. Maybe that'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll just remove the edge there. That's that's more like what I want. I think it's a little too blurry, to be honest with you guys. So we could go to 3D, generate normal map. Good. Obviously, there's a blur here. Thomas, you moron. Click OK. Um, and then what I'm going to do is just go to our layers here. This isn't my favorite thing to do, but because it's so subtle, I'm not too worried about it. We can just do this. Save it and then take a look. Yeah. That's fine. I think we just need to blur it more just so it's very subtle. And then we can even increase the height of the normal right here. Hang on. Yeah. It's 
pretty cool. So it looks like we have some issues with this. At the top, there we go, and now it should be seamless. Yeah. Okay, we've got our tile floor, guys. I like it. Uh, I think what we wanna do is create a dingy yellow wallpaper. Um, actually, let's, let's do this dark one and invert it. So this dark one, we can invert and in, turn it into yellow with dark, yeah, with dark green stripes. Okay, so I'm gonna close all this and we're gonna open up the wallpaper. Actually, let's just duplicate the Art Deco wallpaper. Yep, there it is. And um, this is gonna be called wallpaper dark green. So Nate, uh, nature said, Someone needs to make this a back rooms level. Back rooms is, it's funny, you know, we were working on this. I'm, I'm dead serious, I'm not lying here. I was working on this. I didn't know anything about back rooms. And then I got started getting YouTube recommendations for back rooms. I was like, what? So uh, back rooms is a huge inspiration now. Um, back rooms is freaking awesome. I love the concept, I think it's great. And I figured, hey, let's, why don't we do a, a shooter that's a, a real shooter that's styled like back rooms. You know, why not? Light, light Amalgamation said, this was in my recommendations. Who are you? My name is Thomas Brush. I've, made, I've been making games for 15 years. This is my job. I make games from my bedroom. Uh, well, it's my office, actually. Um, I have a family. I pay the bills by making games. And I have two games on every platform, Neversong and Pinstripe. So be sure to check those out. This is my first 3D game. Um, okay, so we have our, our wallpaper yellow. And we're gonna use some backrooms inspiration here. We're gonna do that dingy, ugly yellow, right? And the theory is we don't need to change out any of the metallic maps or the normal maps or anything like that. Come on. There we go. Ugly yellow, good. And then this guy, we're gonna merge these layers together. We're gonna do that dark green, right? So we're just inverting it. Colorize, drop it down. There we go. I feel weird it being like that. We can try it. I don't know what it'll look like though. So that's wallpaper art deco. We're gonna call this wallpaper yellow art deco. And we need to close this out because we just saved over it. And the metallic looks good, I guess. Um, let's go to our universal materials. And we have our wallpaper art deco. One of the big things that will really be a hindrance when you're learning how to make 3D games is when you don't understand that organizing your materials is paramount. Having your textures and your materials organized in a way that you understand is so important. And using proper naming conventions is very, very helpful. Um, or at least consistent naming conventions. Who cares about proper? It just needs to work for you. Um, this is wallpaper green, Art Deco. Okay, let's drag this in. So that's there. Um, but we want to use the yellow one. There it is. Uh, that's pretty cool. I, I think that it kind of looks gold plated though, and, and I don't want that. I actually want the black trim to look elevated, okay? Um, so let's go to our wallpaper art deco. And just remove this stuff. It needs to look more printed than anything. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's what we want. Um, Good, let's, let's hit play and take a look. I might wanna do white. That looks cool though. I really like it actually. But I think I'm gonna drop the opacity down. I want these to be much creepier looking. Um, so that's cool. We could even bring the smoothness down. Cool. Yeah, I think the texturing is a little intense. So we'll drop it down. There we go. <sighs> okay. 
And then we'll go to the actual wallpaper material and just tweak the smoothness value. Let's go to pause here and take a look. Just sort of not so intense, you know. Okay, drop it down a little bit more. And we have a much more, this is for more creepy areas. Um, the smoothness is still very intense. And bring it up a little bit. Drop this down to maybe 7%. Yeah. Good. Okay, I think that's pretty creepy. Um, good. Yeah. Um, nah. I'm telling you. Guess and check, guys. Yeah, I think that looks better. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things where you just need to be okay with failing a lot while you're making your game. You're gonna be confused, that's okay. And you're gonna wanna change things, that's okay. I think the carpet is a little intense with its normal map. So what we're doing here is we're just getting a nice balance. We're balancing all of our textures in one room a visual balance, okay? So let's go to the carpet red and the carpet plain and the yellow. And we want all of their height maps to be dropped down. We want the normal map to be like 0.2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, look at that. Just flat, you know? Flat carpet. That looks way better, okay? I think we could probably get away with just making this yellow. The green is a little disorienting. So we could do something like that. Cool. Yeah, the smoothness is just a little weird. It's a little weird. So we're almost done with this one and then we're gonna move on to um, the trim pieces. Um, I, I don't know what kind of Art Deco trim we can do, but we're going to try and see. Um, what we can do here. That looks great. I like that a lot. So these trim pieces here, some of you mentioned this during the last stream, they look way too big and I totally agree. Over here is the right size. So that's the trim piece. Um, so the question is, you know, do we need to worry about a very distinct wooden texture for the trim pieces? And I'm not sure. Mm. Mm. Something is wrong with that, that texture. I don't know what it is. I feel like maybe it needs to be white and not black. No. I think it's fine. Um, okay, so regarding Art Deco trim pieces, this is something we're gonna need to Google. Um, let's Google Art De creepy Art Deco hotel and see what we got. Of course, we're gonna get American Horror Story here, which is Hotel Cortez. Regarding trim pieces, It looks like it's like a cool marble. Yeah, so that gold trim on the carpet, we've got that. Um, it's like a cool marble. I think what we could do is something very simple. We could do, um, Do 
Yeah. Okay, I think I got it. I like the brown. Um, again, let's hit play and walk around. I like the brown. I just don't like that it looks like wood because it looks cheap. Um, so that's fine. Yeah, okay. So I like the color. There it is, wood trim. We're going to delete the, the entire wood trim texture, all of that. Actually, let's just rename it. Like we're going to call this trim. How about marble trim? All right. And this is actually going to be, yeah, yeah, I'm fine with it being a square. What we're going to do is we're going to take just the color, which is like this one here, and we're just going to start with a very flat color. Okay. I'm going to delete all this other stuff here. Save it. Um, the name sucks, so we're going to name it Marble Trim Albedo. And I believe what we can do, uh, you know, I want to make sure that we at least get this room looking proper. So these are 0.25, so I'm going to make these 0.25 as well. Drop them down and then do up, go up by one. Drop them down, go up by one. Good. Same thing over here with these uh, and these. Drop them down by one and then go up by 0.25. I'm not going to worry about this area over here. We're just worried about this one little room because this is sort of our test room, right? Uh, this stuff up here could be like a gold trim, right? Um, so if I selected the edge ring, come on. My theory is, I mean, it looks too big automatically. Um, so let's not worry about it. Let's just do this really quick, okay? Um, so this is going to be that trim, okay? So let's go to our wood trim material. Again, we're going to rename this to marble trim. <clears throat> it might be a little too small. Let's hit play and take a look here. It's a little small, I think, for an art deco room. And also, I just wanted to clarify here. We actually are not going to be, we decided, me and Felipe decided, we are not going to worry about insetting them. So they're just going to be flat against the wall, just flush. And we'll, we'll use height maps um, for sure, for sure. And we'll weld all these vertices in just a sec, or at least merge them, right? No, weld. The word is weld, yeah. We'll weld these together, don't worry. And then same over here, right? This just makes things a lot simpler for us. We don't have to worry about all this crap, um, all these different edge pieces, none of that. What's gonna make the room look detailed is the props. I'm not gonna worry too much about these trim pieces, okay? So they're just gonna be flat against the wall. So let's select all of our um, vertices and we're just gonna go to uh, weld vertices and that removes all of the duplicates. So hopefully now I can select this edge ring. Good, okay. And um, I actually think that we want to make it, uh, I think we need to go a little bit higher. So let's, let's select the edge ring um, again. Can we? We cannot. We can do, the, yeah, yeah, we can do the edge. Yeah, select the edge. Thomas, come on, buddy. Look at that. That's weird, I can't select it. Probably just my fault. There we go. Ugh. I can't select the edge. Okay, we'll just select the vertices for now. If we select these vertices, we can go up just one more. Um, I think I wanna just go up by another, and I would love you guys' opinion on this. Just go up by like one more. Does this look too, some of you mentioned that the character looks way too small. Does he look too small with this size here? What do you guys think? Does that trim piece look about the right size? Here's our counter our chairs, how does this look?
Looks fine. Okay, anybody else? How's your opinion? It does feel small. What feels small, the player or the trim? The trim should be bigger. What's, what, let's be more specific. When you say still looks small, does the player look small or does the trim look small? Which one? I think the trim looks fine. The trim makes the player feel small, okay. So you guys think it should go down one? No, if we make if we make the trim bigger, it's gonna make the room feel smaller. So it's like all about like relative sizing. Um, okay. <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna keep it as is. AKA, I'm not gonna listen to your opinions. I'm just kidding. Not really, though. Um, I'm just going to see if I can make it look a little bit more detailed. It's all about relative detailing. If you can detail, let's let's set, make sure we set this properly. So set it to four. And the theory is, if it's 0.5, it means that, and, and the width of a single texture is four units. That means eight units. OK, so we're going to do eight units of the paneling or like the, the I'll, I'll show you in just a sec. I can't explain it. Uh, what are we doing? Marble trim, there it is. Let's take this, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna divide the selection, or the size of it, divide it by, uh, oh, what's, um, what's 100 divided by eight? Does anybody know? What's 100 divided by eight? We can calculate it. I feel like an idiot. It's like 12 or something, 12.5, 12.25. Yes, 12.5. OK. So we're going to do 12.5% like this. And first thing I'm going to do is just create some ambient occlusion with a gradient like this. Okay, and we'll do a white one on the top. Very subtle, okay? We're gonna take that, convert it to a smart object. That way we can just duplicate these on top of each other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then distribute them vertically. If I save that, the theory is it should show up really nice. Yeah, I believe it is, right? Should be perfect. We just select all the materials. So select by material. I think it's good. Um, I th I'm seeing some like subtle changes there. I don't know why, but it's fine, I guess. And then um, to make it look like marble trim, what we're gonna do is just take open it up, and we're gonna do one here. So we'll do this. And then invert with a white lip, and then set it to overlay. And then we're gonna take it and duplicate it down like that. Distribute them vertically nice and clean. Good, good, and let's take a look. Yeah, yeah. Pretty good, I, I am curious as to why it's Let's go to the, the we're going to select all the materials, go to the UV editor, and see if we can drift it. Hit four. Tiling is four. Y. We can click this and just shift it up. I, th I don't know why we need to shift it up, but I think we need to. Um, so let's, where's our arrow? There it is. And then let's go to, why? There's no, what? Um, okay, we can try this. Turn off snapping, and then we'll just... Shift it up a little bit, yeah. There we go. Hey, it's not working. Hmm, why? Four divided by eight, or uh, 
four divided by two. It should work. It should work. Hit four. Did that do it? <gasps> what? We shall do some double checking once we start building out this level. But overall, guys, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. We are gonna do a height map as well. Um, that, it just feels like a lot for, for a very simplistic looking game. So I'm gonna delete one of them and then pull it up like this and save it again, save it again. Take a look. Pretty close, but that looks great. That's great. It even looks like wooden trim, honestly, and it looks fine. Um, so we're gonna do a height map. You wanna do a height map? I really like doing height maps. Um, so what we're gonna do is, um, <clears throat> the height map, it's, well, I'm curious if we need to do a, a normal map. The normal map. Let's do a height map first. We'll just do a height map first. So the height map is gonna be a little bit different, guys. The height map is gonna be literally, remember white is very tall, or a, a lot of height, and then black is none. So we're gonna do something like this. You could even take this. Um, actually, that's, I think that's fine, actually. We're just gonna do something like this and take a look. So that looks like our height map. Um, that looks like a good height map. So let's take our material our trim piece, marble trim, and we'll bring in our height map. And I'm curious if we'll even see it. Okay, it looks like it's inverting. Ah, no, no, we're good. It looks like you won't even be able to tell. Yeah. It kind of looks elevated, meh. I think it's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys win. Sorry. How's that look? <laughs> Sorry. How's that look? Does that look good? Um, I think it does. I like it a lot. So there's our wood trim. Hey, it looks good up there too. Look at that. That's kind of cool. It doesn't look like marble trim, does it? So let's just rename it. Uh, it's just wooden trim but it's smooth and clean, right? Um, so let's go to our wood trim, or our marble trim. Let's rename it to wood trim. And the material itself, same thing. And by the way, guys, this video is sponsored by Full-Time Game Dev, which is my massive program that's gonna take you two months to complete. It is a premium program, guys, because it's huge, and it's gonna teach you everything that you need to know, at least in my opinion. Can't make any promises, but I think it's gonna teach you everything that I've learned, everything I know about starting a full-time game studio. There's one code left. There should be one code left. Be sure to check it out um, below. You're gonna get 50% off, but you're also gonna get my 2D art program as well for free, but just for this event. And also my program that teaches you how to secure live streamers to play your game. And by the way, if you're a student, let us know in the chat. And I also wanna thank the students who joined yesterday. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. John, Igor, Joseph, Romario, and Luca, thank you so much for joining in the recent days. It just means the world to me. It supports the game, but more importantly, it does support you guys. Um, I can honestly say, guys, with 3,000 students worldwide running this program for two years, it is a really good program. It really could change your life. Obviously, guys, I can't make promises, but I can say it really is a great program. Okay. Uh, so click the link below to check it out if you're interested. And you'll, you'll also get a shout out tomorrow and a free t-shirt. So give it a shot. Um, what was I gonna do before I started rambling? Let's hit play. There's something that I wanted to do. Oh, just rename everything. <laughs> um, the marble trim, make sure it's named wood trim. Boy, that normal map looks terrible on here. I don't think it needs one. I don't think it need. I don't think it needs a normal map. We could do like point one. 
Yeah, point one's good. Okay, um, Thomas, grow up. What are you doing? I lost my train of thought here. Wood trim. Wood trim. Okay, that's called marble trim. So we're just going to name it wood trim because it looks like wood trim. And hey, hey, you know, I think it could also have a nice shine to it, huh? So let's go to wood trim. Um, and we could we could even, remember, we could do a, um, a metallic map. Yeah, let's go, let's go to the, the texture itself, the wood trim texture. And I'm curious what the metallic map would look like if it was like splotched. Um, so I'm gonna take, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna go wood trim, metallic, or roughness. I'm still so confused, but uh, I'll just talk to Felipe about it. Um, this, we could probably take the marble texture. Uh, this right here, this one. I feel like we could open it up in Photoshop, do some crazy contrast like this, do another one, and then paste it in the alpha channel of our metallic. And I'm curious if that'll just do it, right? And it should loop properly too. I know that's weird um, to do it this way, but uh, I think it might look cool. Let's try it out. So let's drag that in there. It's our metallic. Ah, I lost it. Wood trim, metallic. There we go. I think we, if we did a 200% scale Okay, so look at that, it's weird. Um, does it need to be in a different channel? Does it need to be in a red channel, guys? You can use your Albedas Alpha, really? Really? Are you sure? Let's take a look, let's do this little test. You can use your Albedas Alpha map. That is so good to know. Where'd the height map go? Apparently I just deleted it and it's gone forever. I didn't really like it anyway. Um, okay, let's try this. No, that didn't do it. Really? I, I didn't. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's working. So you're saying that if we go to the alpha channel, it should work? You have to tell Unity it's a normal map? Now switch the source to Albeda Alpha. Oh, okay. Um, I, I think that works. I, I wonder if we can do, it's kind of cool. Now it definitely looks like marble, but it's got that nice roughness to it. Let's take a look. Pretty cool. Um, drop down the smoothness and the metallic. Just ever so subtle. It's fine. I, I don't know exactly what I'm doing, to be completely honest with you guys. But overall, you know, I think it looks pretty sweet. <laughs> um, Okay, we've got wood trim, we've got wallpaper, we've got carpet, we've got tile, two kinds of tile. Um, and I feel like we can, I, let's, let's open up that, that screenshot again for all those different hotels. And I want to figure out what they're doing with brick walls. I have a theory that they're not even using brick walls. I have a theory they're using marble walls. Yes, they are. Lots of marble. Well, fortunately, we already have a, a marble uh, texture that we downloaded, right? So the, uh, let's see here, the albedo for the marble is like this. So 
we're going to bring it up here and just do this. And I think if we double check here, it looks like the marble should be, it probably should match the tile, you know? So if we open up that, uh, the marble tile, yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. Let's save this in a new folder really quick. Textures, marble wall. It's gonna be marble wall. Now this one's gonna be interesting because we're, we're especially, like with marble, you really do want your roughness map or whatever it's called. <laughs> You want it to be perfect. So let's um, do a little bit of a hue saturation shift. There we go, that looks great. And then we're gonna go ahead and do it up top here. So we're gonna select all these materials and we want to create a new material called marble wall. Material marble wall. And we wanna drag in that new marble wall. So let's go to our marble wall, drag it in. And the theory is we should just be able to put it up there. It's a little bad. It's a lot bad. Because it's a little too, uh, too small. I think it should be nice and big, right? So the theory is I can go transform by 200%. Well, how about let's do 400% like that. It's not gonna, it's not gonna blend properly, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. Okay, let's hit play mode and take a look. Yeah, I think that's good, guys. Um, a little darker, a little bit more saturated. Yeah, that's great. That's gonna look really good. Okay. Um, we could even do green marble, but let's just do the yellow marble for now, all right? Um, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna merge all this together, and what's cool is I can actually just flip it horizontally once, and then fade out the right side, or the left side. Look, that's gonna blend perfectly. And then we'll do one on the top, transform, flip, vertical. Same thing. and then save it, and we should have a perfect blend. Good, okay. Um, I think this top piece though, let's see here. Where am I getting that weird looping effect? Looks like, I wonder if we need to do this. It's this over here. Yeah, yeah, so watch this. So to, to avoid that effect, what you can do is select this. Just select portions of it and then fill it. And hopefully Photoshop will fill it in properly here. Yeah, so hopefully that'll get rid of that looping look. Yeah, it's not as loopy anymore, that's great. Um, hey, I think it needs to be much shinier. We also need a normal map. So I'm gonna create a normal map from the marble. Um, I kinda don't mind the, the normal map that's currently there, actually. Um, I'm going to Actually, I kind of do. <laughs> Let's see here, marble floor or marble wall. Grab this and let's just see what happens when we drag in or create a normal map out of this. I have a theory that it's gonna look terrible. Nope, it looks pretty good actually. Click okay. We're gonna save that as a normal. Marble wall normal. Drag it into our little wall here, fix it. Look at that, hey, and set it to one. You can really see, that's like really intense, but like 0.2, looks pretty good. It looks a little bit like stone, but I don't really mind it, mind it. We'll do a super shiny, right? But we need that metallic map, right? Um, we already have a metallic map, actually. Uh, but we can, can't we just do albedo alpha and then go none? And then we can take this. Let's open up that marble. And um, actually, this roughness map here, what I'm going to do is, remember, we can do 
400%. Scale it by 400%. Like that. I'm going to do some crazy contrast on this. We're going to stick it in the alpha channel. Okay. Um, where's my layers? Good, good, good. Let's go to our channel layer. Yes, delete that. Alpha, paste. Looks like the brightness and contrast didn't remember. Okay, I'm going to save that. Ah, crap. Wrong one. Um, we'll go back in time. Layers. No, 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 it's the right one. It's the right one. <laughs> uh, let's, go, let's go forward. It's the right one. Redo. Delete. Channels. There's our alpha. Save it. There we go. Okay, so we might need to invert it. Yes, we want to invert this. Save it. And almost there, guys. Is it, does it need to be inverted? It's kind of looks like a plaster. Maybe. Anybody have any ideas? I think it might be the the other way around here, yeah. Oh man. Um, okay, so where it's white. Okay, so what we need to do is increase the contrast and the brightness. Getting there, getting there. So that's intense, right? Keep going. And then I think we'll do a overall just gradient fill of just white. So we'll do this. Okay, we'll do 100%. Drop down the opacity by 25, and then we could just fill it in. That way we have a little bit of shine on it at all times, maybe a little bit more. Come on. I wonder why. That's crazy. I don't know what to say. I'm still figuring this out, guys. It's kind of cool, but it doesn't look like marble. Hmm. I think I'm going to delete the alpha channel really quick. And then jump back to metallic. I'm still learning this stuff. Sorry, guys. We don't want it to be metallic. It might be the normal map that's causing the problem, guys. Seriously, it might be the normal map. Um, Let's go back and let's go forward in time. And then invert it again. We're going to try that. <sighs> Man. For Marvel, you need to remove the normal map. Yeah, I agree. No normal map. Um, But, okay, so let's see here. We'll turn, I, I don't think it needs to be metallic, right guys? Like it's not metal, it's stone. There we go, I mean, that's okay, right? That looks okay. Yeah. Can't really tell up there. Hmm. Let's put it down here so we can see it better. Um, so this one here, we'll just drag the marble wall here too. There we go. I think I think we'll be able to tell better down here. Yeah, yeah. I think that was pretty good, guys. What do you think? 
think it's all right. I think it's A-OK. -okay. It's a little textury though. I'm wondering if we need to increase the size, but. Hmm. Okay. So let's take that channel. We're gonna copy it and put it into an actual layer really quick. And we're just gonna make it blend properly. Uh, so we're gonna flip this horizontally. Whoops, let's do this, basics. 100% uh, opacity and then we can sort of fade out the edge here so it's nice and blended properly. Merge those layers together, flip it vertically and then do the same at the bottom here. Merge those, copy, delete, go to channels, alpha, paste it over top of it, save it and we should have a nice clean blend. That looks pretty good, honestly. My theory is to go into the actual albedo here and uh, make it a little bit more toony. So go to uh, blur, smart blur. Save it, let's take a look. Feels a little bit more toony. Let's take a look. Yeah, it looks better. And then I'm gonna go over top of it with just a very subtle overlay. Like that. Because I think what makes it really look like marble, yeah, is the roughness, right? That's pretty cool. Um, honestly, we could use that as ceilings, as floors. But I think what's gonna make it look even more like marble is the coloring, right? So if I change the name of this to marble wall, it's gonna be yellow. We can create another one and call it green. Um, we could take this, I'm gonna call this green, just duplicate it and do a green one. And this is yellow. Actually, let's make sure we close it in uh, Photoshop. Uh, we don't need the normal map. So it's causing weird problems. Marble's flat, for goodness sake. Uh, let's open up the green one. And same thing here. Um, hue saturation, colorize, and we'll do a green. Okay. So let's find this texture here, marble, or this material here, marble wall yellow. We have a green as well. Drag the green in there. That's cool. I didn't know you could put the uh, metallic map or the roughness map in the in the actual alpha channel. That's pretty cool. Um, let's do that. Take a look at the green one here. Nice. That's cool. Not as saturated and a little bit brighter. Save it. That's pretty sweet, guys. It looks like we've got one here as well. Um, that looks great, honestly. Uh, Fleepy is always doing great work with, with uh, his uh, textures. Awesome. I love it, very, very good. Very, very good. All right, all right. Well guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. And just remember that full-time game dev, when you do purchase the course, it is a premium program, so it's gonna take you two months to complete. You go at your own pace. Um, there's a, probably one coupon code left, okay, below, if you wanna click and use that promo code, which is, today's promo code is creepy. Um, when you do join the program, it does support the development of Father. It really does, guys. Um, I have 3,000 students worldwide. Um, if you're a student, let us know in the chat what you think about the program. I'd love to hear, um, and I will be reading that in just a second. Um, but just know, guys, you're going to not only get full-time game dev, which is going to teach you how to build a game studio, how to code, how to um, use Unity, how to reach out to publishers, how to secure funding, how to uh, reach out to the press, how to get coverage, how to launch a game, hit the Steam front page. 
I've done this multiple times. Um, it also teaches you how to do crowdfunding. I've raised six figures on crowdfunding. So I know what I'm doing. The cool thing about this course, guys, is it's taught by an actual game dev in the trenches. You don't get that a lot. Um, but you're also going to learn 2D Art Pro, which is totally free with this package. Um, and it's for this sale event. But you're also going to get a program called Stream My Game, which teaches you how to reach out to YouTubers and streamers and how to incentivize them to play your games. I've gotten Jack Jacksepticeye to play my games. I even got to do a video with PewDiePie. Um, I've gotten Matt Pat to play my games, uh, the Game Grumps. Um, and you're also going to get a free t-shirt, which is really cool. Um, so be sure to check out this program below if you're interested. It really is a great program, guys. The reviews, I'm humbled by the reviews. They're, they're pretty awesome. Um, we have great reviews. We have a private Discord server. And uh, yeah, just check it out. I can confidently say I love this program. I really think it's a great program. So check it out below. Thanks for hanging out, guys. It always means a lot to me um, that you're willing to watch me. You're willing to hear me give ad reads. It means so much to me. Um, so I will talk to you guys later. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below. It's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which is really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important. Hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game. And let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up. Your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye. I love you too.